My friends, hello and welcome to Perfect Dark Speed Lore. Yes, indeed, Perfect Dark Speed Lore. Many of you will know my GoldenEye Speed Lore series, taking a deep look into one of the game's many stages, how the speedrun has progressed and the strategies have changed on that stage over the last 20 years, and the players that made it all happen. But tonight, we're going to take a look at a Perfect Dark level. Datadyne investigation on the agent difficulty and do the same. And I have a very special guest to help me along with this one, Carl Jobst. Carl, welcome. Many people involved with my stream already know you, but you know, introduce yourself a little more. First of all, thanks for having me on, Goose. I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, I am the current Perfect Dark champion. And uh, I also hold the 80% world record for Perfect Dark. And I have been known to dabble in GoldenEye. And uh, also, I've played a little bit of uh, Super Mario 64 and Zelda Ocarina of Time as well. But my main bread and butter really is Perfect Dark. And it's been Perfect Dark for a long while, I would say. Uh, you're the champion now. You've been the champion in the past as well. It is fair to say that on this level, at some point, you've also... You've achieved the world record at least once at some point on this level. I have, definitely, at least once. And, and when... uh, So I started uh, running this game in 2001, and I became the champion in 2002. And then I haven't really played consistently the full, you know, 17 years it's been. I've had some hiatuses here and there, but uh, I'm back now and fully in force. Awesome, and... and... I mean, when I look at, when I do the GoldenEye lores, the first world records often are documented in about 1998. When are the earliest mm -hmm. records for Perfect Dark usually documented? From 2000. 2000, I think, okay. when was the game released? It was in 2000. I don't know the exact month. But we have a decent idea of what happened uh, going forward from about late 2000. Pretty unbelievable. 18 years of history, and we're going to get into all of it tonight, really. Uh, here, I'll pull up the objectives on this level. Data Dine Investigation. So there's two objectives. Pretty simple level. Uh, holograph the radioactive isotope. Uh, holograph, I guess, is sort of like photograph. Take a picture. Uh, people familiar with GoldenEye will know some stages you have to do that. And locate Dr. Carroll is just basically get to the end of the mission. So pretty straightforward. Let's show a Let's show a run. This is a completely vanilla uh, run that I mocked up a couple of days ago, just to show exactly what's happening with a level, and we can explain it as we go. And so, Perfect Dark kind of has these more cinematic storyline in these cutscenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's usually something going on in the cinema, usually a lot longer, which can be a bit of a bane on some levels where you actually have to wait the cinema. Uh, and they also have pretty long uh, outros as well. It's a lot more in-depth in the story. Yeah, this one wasn't too long. It was maybe 15 seconds or so. Okay, so you're just basically running through the level like a speed run. And now you're coming up to the holograph area. Mm -hmm. Snap a pick. You can see objective one show up, so that's the first objective. Now all we have to do really is get to the end. Cool. And on Agent, yeah, so, you know, presumably there's more stuff to do on other difficulties, but on Agent, it's just run to the end of the level. Pretty much. And this is the main sort of feature of the level, is this triple set of lasers that's coming up here. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm waiting for a bot that comes along. Uh, and you can see it's going to take down this laser so I can get through. And I have to wait... Uh, for this bot to to take all the, these lasers down before I can go on. And that's actually why I waited the entire cinema at the start of the level as well, because during the cinema, the bot is going along its path. So the longer I wait in the cinema means the, the less time I have to wait during the actual run. Yeah, so if you skipped this the, the cinema right away, the bot would have been not as far along in the path, yeah. and uh, you would have had to wait another 15 or 20 seconds for the bot to take down the lasers going in the same direction as you. Exactly. 
And then the what I did there a moment ago was just uh, had, had to use an uplink to bypass the lock on a door. So we have to spend uh, eight seconds waiting for that door to unlock there as well. Yes, and, and and I mean obviously it's the most basic function of the of the level. I'm sure some people are wondering what can be improved. Obviously, we have years of history to mm -hmm. go over. Now, people pondered this back then uh, as the game came out as well. Here's an interesting thread called The Elite in 300 Years. And a gentleman named Dark Light says, uh, he, he actually made, this kind of funny, he made a Geosities, people hate how I pronounce Geosities, he made a Geosities webpage talking about the elite community in 300 years, what'll happen. And one thing he mentions is, you know, talking about the max times, the best records possible all the levels, including a theoretical skipping of the lasers in, in this level. Uh, obviously, we just watched you wait for the lasers. Is this ever going to happen? Is such a thing possible, Carl? I'm not sure if it is possible. It's, it was always, it's always talked about, uh, you know, the holy grail of the level ever since sort of day one was how do we get past the lasers without having to wait for the bot? Uh, but we just weren't sure about if it was possible or how it could be done. So I, I guess we'll have to find out. Maybe it is. Who knows? Uh, here's another interesting thread called Blessed Be the Perfect Dark Gods. Um, Paragon X9, very well-known leader back in the day, Perfect Dark. He was a champion at one point, correct? He was the first great champion. Okay. The, uh, he, he, yeah, he really took the game to the next level. It was still early when he was dominating in 2000, 2001. But he was... Uh, responsible for some of some really major advances forward and some some huge uh, strategy developments, uh, like even for example the defection agent glitch uh, he discovered. So a ton of amazing strategies that he invented, uh, and he really was the first truly dominant champion. I mean, that t mentioning the defection agent glitch reminds me that would be a really good idea for just a, a, not a lore but a video focusing on defection agent quite a story uh there something for another time certainly but paragon says uh, you know he hasn't started a, a new religion but something was helping him out last night he got a 132 on investigation agent so that's a mark 132 there's no video of this run that's a good mark that's our first record that's our kind of base point mm -hmm. We saw Carl's run was a 136, the example run. 136. The, he says the bot took down the first leaders at 50 seconds on his mm -hmm. 132. Now, if we go back and watch your run here, where does the bot take down the first lasers? Let's take a look. Around 53. So your example mm -hmm. runs about three seconds slower. Now, is it rare for the bot to take down the lasers at 50? at that world record pace yeah it's a bit rare there's definitely some variation to how fast the bot could be uh so that the the speed at which the bot gets to the first laser is our main time target that we use to establish how fast it is 50 is definitely a quick bot uh and it could vary by up to five seconds so it could even be 54 seconds getting to the lasers uh it could even be a little bit quicker than what uh, paragon got uh, and at this stage, we didn't really know what was causing the bot to be faster or slower. It was really a mystery. So that's why uh, Paragon's like, you know, blessed by the PD gods that they have literally no idea. And they sort of have this religious understanding where if they get a fast bot, it was the gods doing it. Uh, and it's really out of their control. You know, it, it, it reads very much like like the foundations of a society or civilization, right? At, at yeah. first, you chalk it up to a religious experience, which can be a very, certainly very interesting for from a storytelling perspective, I would say. And still, some as far as I as far as I was aware, no sacrifices were made, as far as I was aware. But uh, they might have been close at the time. So yeah, giving it a go. No, it just reminds me of, of funny kind of moments where I I. I pretend to sacrifice or or even in in uh 
in that video where I just looked at the ancient N64 scores, I talked about someone sacrificing a control stick on N64 for the Shy Guy, Fly Guy <laughs> yeah. record. So these, these sort of beliefs have been around a long time. There was some, another thread by Dark Akko talking about his cartridge being jinxed. He always gets a high 54 to 56 bot, four to six seconds slower than the world record. And so I guess the guys at this point believe that their cartridges may have just been unlucky. Yeah, and imagine being that person where I, no one had any idea what was going on, but you're the guy who's seeing these other players get 50 bots, and every time you're getting 54 and 55, and there's no explanation for it, and no one can tell you why. Imagine how frustrating that would be uh, for people back then. No, exactly. And, and these posts are from 2001. Um, I know for a fact there's going to be people watching this video who weren't born then or were born very shortly beforehand. We didn't have emulators, you know, debugging, coding, EverDrives, stuff to look into um, all these codes. So really they had no idea how it worked. Another thread, this is Discombobulator. He was, was he the perfect art champion at this point? Yeah, he was the first ever dual champion he came out with this massive on horde uh i think it was in 2001 uh he may have even sort of started the whole hoarding trend where you get a whole bunch of prs and you don't tell anyone and you keep it a secret and then you release them all at the same time for, for a big effect but he came out with a big on horde in 2001 uh and he became the first person to become champion both in goldeneye and perfect dark at the same time which was a huge deal at the time that still is a huge deal. It's, a, it's a, always a good accomplishment. Well, I mean, yeah, even throughout the history, it's happened what only three guys have ever managed to do it in, in all of history. So pretty insane. Mm. Um, okay. But in January 2001, he retired. He's fed up with the randomness in Perfect Dark, uh, including on investigation, uh, a total of 20... Oh, oh, it took him seven hours straight to get the lasers down fast enough to get 132. Seven hours was a big deal back then. Seven hours of uh, straight playing to get one run <laughs> that was world record pace. And as a result, he had no choice but to but to retire. So, <laughs> I, I mean, it really shows you how tough this was on these guys. Let's show another run. This is uh, D-Man. He was a pretty good Perfect Dark player in his, in his day. I think he was mm -hmm. a, a French-Canadian. His, his name actually comes from... It's just short for defenseman in in ice hockey, although I think he wow. was actually a, I think he was actually a goaltender from what I've what I've read. Um, so kind of interesting how the names don't quite add up. But he was yeah French Canadian guy. I think he peaked at like third place in the game. Anyways, we're seeing him run further into the cam spy room. That was kind of weird why he flicked the camera a bunch of times. But yeah, there's no message to that. We're just screwing around, uh, trying to make this process as te uh, less tedious as possible while we wait for the bot. Th that's right. You bring up a good point. So you don't have to be fast in the first start of the mission because yeah. you still, once you get to this lasers, you have to wait for the, for the cleaning bot. There it is. And yeah. this, I mean, this looks reasonably fast, all things considered. There it goes down. And he's, you still have to wait, though. So it's, wow, really quite quite something yeah and now he's doing a strategy that was developed really early on by uh, a guy named snapdragon who actually was the creator of the perfect dark elite uh at the beginning so he kept his uh cam spy and when he got to the third laser set you can actually release it through the lasers so you're on one side and when you release the cam spy it's on the other side and he used the time that he would have otherwise been waiting for the lasers to go ahead and open the two next doors so they're open for him so it saves about two seconds to do that wow and i think we'll find that's uh, a pretty fitting time saved uh when this mm -hmm. when this record screen shows up and we see that he's achieved on this run investigation agent 130 fits the mm -hmm. bill perfectly so a, a cool little strategy that was that was used there Okay, so we we can't get ourselves through the lasers, but we can at least send the cam spy through. It'll open a door for us. Yes. Not bad. Now, this you you had the world record 130. Mm -hmm. A couple other guys who we previously mentioned, Paragon, Discombobulator Randy, Expert Gamer, 
Punjab. Punjab's actually come back to the uh, elite uh, recently. So yes. he was the one who untied with 130. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Now there's another thread here. Actually, this one was, was a little before it. Um, 131 in agent research. External here. Since he has a 136, he's wondering how to get a 131. Um, nobody knows, again, nobody knows how to get the bot faster. And now this guy, Lanky, he had a lot of theories on how to get faster bots. He, uh, you know, he says, okay, look, pause the game, do a few jumping jacks, meditate, sleep seven, eight hours, do push-ups, stretch, meditate, then keep playing. Because when you get the rare miracle bot, the fast bot, you don't want to screw it up. You don't and get... uh, what about the, uh, uh, check out the, his advice uh, before that as well previous post if you don't get a quick bot on your first five or so tries turn off the n64 turn it back on play another level then go back to investigation for about five tries if you still don't get a good bot he feels sorry for you and there's, <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing he can be done okay so if, to, to clarify all, all that information there is complete junk it, it doesn't affect anything uh i mean lanky was one of those guys i remember him very clearly always playing investigation I have no idea how much he played it. It must have been a lot. And he used to always talk about these crazy bots, like he's saying there, uh, he used to get 49, 50 bots. Uh, and I used to read his posts and was always in awe of how quick his bots were because back in 2001, at least, I was never getting those, those types of bots. And he always got quick bots, but he never, as far as I could tell, ever got the world record. And I have no idea why that is. I mean, he's with the bots that he was getting, he should have gotten the world record. So unfortunately for him, his name is not eternally etched on the uh, the world record database, unfortunately. But he definitely was one of these guys who had these crazy theories about how to get these fast bots. It must have been something he was doing that he was not aware of, uh, but it definitely wasn't uh, turning off his Nintendo after five tries and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, it, it would be cool if we had footage of him back in the day. We could analyze it and kind of figure out what he may have been doing. Because obviously, you know, we've come to the conclusion that the bot speed is sort of random. But the way we all know video games and speedrunning works is that obviously there's stuff you can do sometimes to affect the randomness to some extent. Yes. Um, now, so again, this post was 2001. The run I just showed, the 130... A D man got that in late 2003. Um, mm -hmm. the, the record had been 130 for about a year and a half. And now, this next one I'm going to show was achieved only two days after D man's 130. And this is David Forn, aka Darko Perfection. Wow, what incredible video effects. I mean, for 2003, that's very impressive. I don't even know video editors existed back then, to be honest. He, uh, who knows? And now, I remember asking you before we before we went live tonight, you don't even remember who this guy is. Would not have a clue who he is. I checked uh, his history, and he did come up with a few good times. Uh, but for the life of me, I just uh, do not remember him specifically. I don't think he was ever a very high, highly ranked person. He might have been some, someone who just uh, achieved several decent world records but didn't wasn't like a, a fully well-rounded player yeah no it is interesting especially sometimes like i know around that era i'm not sure if it matches perfectly you kind of went on hiatus for a few years and i've done the same and uh you can you miss chunks of time in history you mm -hmm. miss guys who should have been had a whole career for a year but can we go back to the beginning uh you know mm -hmm. i just want to mention at the beginning of the run you can see he's really shooting around and trying to create as much chaos as possible. So around this time, theory a theory started developing that if you made as much lag as possible, uh, kept every guard alive, did everything that you could to slow the game down, that you would get quicker bots. And that always has kind of been a, a prevailing theory in Goldeneye Perfect Dark, like creating lag can speed up random things. I'm not sure if there's any logical basis in it. I'm not sure if, if there is. They could be. 
I mean, these types of theories obviously sprout from somewhere, and it, and it definitely became an established theory and an established practice. It could have been a thing where one person did it and they coincidentally got a fast bot and then they got a world record. And a lot of times when new world records are achieved, people really latch on to the way they did it. Mm -hmm. So it could have been, there could be some truth to it. There could be, definitely could be some merit or it could have been just someone did it. And then by coincidence, they got a world record and then everyone started doing it after that. Now, he's kind of getting trolled there. A guard was in his way as he was, as that um, uplink was finishing. Might have cost yeah. him a second, because we did see he had a 48 bot. Like, that's the fastest we've seen tonight, mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. a good margin. Two seconds that, or so. That guard, that guard showing up there when you're doing the uplink is very troll. Very, very troll. It's very rare as well. So to get a 48 bot and have that guard come up and, and do that to him was really, really unlucky. Definitely, and he still managed a 129, an untied world record in November 2003. Pretty pretty nice run for the time, I would say. And yeah, it's decent, for sure. Now, an interesting thing was sort of going on in the previous two years or so is some people, we know how speedrun claims without proof pan out many times, but there's this guy, Red Bull, Maxi. Uh, he was a good buddy of mine uh, around 2010 for a while. In 2002, he was claiming he skipped the lasers on investigation. He doesn't know how he did it. He was pushing all the buttons and playing around with his cam spy, and a guard shot him from behind, and suddenly he was through it. Wow. And he's really, people are kind of questioning him, but he's really saying, like, you know, I, I haven't been smoking for several days. I'm positive. <laughs> I, the bot was gone. There, there, some people were theorizing, are you sure? Are you sure you weren't just kind of out of it? And the bot pushed the lasers down, and then, you know, you carried on. No, you know, like, he really skipped. He believes he skipped. And, uh, but then he kind of turns a little bit more troll. You know, you don't believe me? Soon I'll know how to do this, and I'll have all three world records, and be begging me for the strategy. You know, we kind of know how these insane claims go, and usually there's not much credibility to them. Um, in fact, I'll show a run here what'll happen when you when you do try to sit the lasers. Let's see where we are at here. It's like, you know, it, it's very, very difficult to do. Um, the lasers... Well, it's, it's, it may not even be possible. Well, yeah, of course. It's like, look, so so here's here's a run. You're going to... When you... Tr well, they push you back. There's It's like a solid wall. There's no... You can't get through them. And then, you know, there's the cleaning bot, and then you'll get through. So, you know, you can actually kind of see maybe if on this run, um, if the person, if the runner tried to skip the lasers and the bot was just there behind them at the right time, they might have thought they did it without it actually mm -hmm. happening. But you Yeah, can it, it could have been... See, it's, it, if it wasn't a troll, if something legitimately happened and he wasn't sure and, and he's like, oh, I really think I did it, the most likely candidate would have been uh, he because he mentioned he was in cam spy, and that seems to be the most important factor here. So the, the, the bot might have taken down the lasers while he wasn't paying, paying attention, and then he got shot through. And then when the lasers reappeared, he was on the other side. So that could have been it. If it wasn't a troll and it was just a, a mistake, and he didn't know what was happening, or he could have just been flat out lying. And as we've seen many times throughout speedrunning history. And now we're going to skip ahead to a run, and I'm sure some things will be noteworthy in this run. This is now in 2005. This is mm -hmm. our pal, Brian Bosshart. He goes by the big boss man in Perfect Dark. Um, so what are some of the things we're, we're looking for in this run here? So you can see he's switching weapons back and forth. This does really tax the game and, and causes a lot of lag spikes. So that's why he's doing that. And this is the time where boss... He had came into Goldeneye and, and was really starting to destroy Goldeneye. And now he's coming into Perfect Dark and using his, you know, 200 gamer IQ to develop new strategies uh, in this game. So he's really taking the, you know, the lag sort of strategies to the next level here. And you'll see he does one thing different here as well, which was a new strategy that he discovered. 
So as we wait for it here, he's just waiting for the bot to, to come along. Now, he's going to look away and try to create a lag spike just there. And what actually happened was the bot warped through the first laser set. And normally, whenever the bot takes down a laser, it has to stop. The laser has to come down, and then the, then the bot continues to move. But because he unloaded the bot at that particular time, the bot uh, the bot's path continued on as if the laser wasn't even there. But when he came back, the laser was gone. So it ends up saving uh, one to two seconds just on that first laser set. That's certainly pretty clever. And yeah, it just kind of shows how people have all these kind of religious beliefs on how to do things faster. And it is kind of a very, maybe not logical, but a very thoughtful clear type of strategy that actually seems to work now we also see him turn off high res option and 169 screen option mm -hmm. which are like when you put high res on it legs the game terribly right exactly so the whole time before then before the lasers he was playing with high res and the 169 aspect ratio so it was it's hard to kind of tell from the video but it was extremely laggy uh extremely hard to play uh, but really trying to tax the system at the time but they yeah, i want to mention that uh, uh, the bot warp for the first laser is definitely a concrete strap that works essentially every time as long as you do it right wow that's pretty wild i mean like we have seen over time similar cases uh where you look away you unload an object and mm -hmm. it can have some some uh unintended well, we do any or, map. or like, even with Mind throws in control, for example, we throw it through doors just by looking away at the right time. Yeah, people who have seen the last Speedler episode will be familiar with that for sure. And uh, your boss is just going to carry on here. I think boss is going to watch the entirety of the ending cutscene, which is kind of uh, a troll thing. There he finishes the run. And for some reason, it was just kind of like a style points on a good run. If you just watch the whole minute long cut oh he doesn't in this case 128 uh i think that may be that may, that may be the extent of the investigation oh. i'm not sure uh but it was funny because yeah in 2004 i think uh me and matt cook used to watch boss hearts golden eye videos and he kind of really popularized the waiting the cinema uh he, because he had many world records and, and essentially he used to do it all the time and we used to think it was funny and maybe even kind of try hard because we were just angsty young men back then. Uh, so we decided to make a joke out of it and do it on Perfect Dark, which sometimes has, you know, minute long end cinemas. And uh, we used to think it was really funny by, by waiting the whole cinema. I, I remember. I, I was going to say, that became, yeah, yeah. A, it became a thing now where everyone does it. But I can tell you, that wait, especially when you're not sure what the end time is, that wait, that minute-long wait when you're waiting in the end cinema is, is torture. I mean, you can imagine it's kind of torture with Goldeneye when you're waiting in the end cinema, but it's magnified ten times worse on Perfect Dark when you have these long outros. No, definitely. And uh, people familiar with the Lockwood Streets 112 video who may not know what all of the things he says means, but may know every line in the video when he says, I, I waited the cinema too because I thought it might be 112. Um, that's exactly what he's talking about is you kind of wait the cutscene to give it the more cinematic feel before the time reveal. Boss... And David mentioned um, oh, sorry, before you go on David Clements is saying he doesn't skip anymore because of the 0 0.1 chance that the game freezes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is legitimately true and uh, that's why it's so uh nervous like i said nerve-wracking to wait a minute uh when you get a good time because there is that chance that the n64 just completely freezes up and and the run won't count no it's true and i'm not sure we've ever seen a, a time when an untitled record happened and the game froze uh but maybe we'll have to deal with that at some point in the future for sure especially as, as the consoles get a little bit more weak now this was an untied record boss said it in march 2005 like Carl said this was kind of just after Boss destroyed Goldeneye, had like 51 out of 60 of the game's records, and now Boss is coming in to destroy Perfect Dark in the same manner. And he eventually would, and Boss would become another dual champion in the game in the summer of 2005. 
a few months after this run. Boss mm-hmm. never had 129. Only Darko Perfection and Your Eliteness had 129. So Boss skipped the 129 for the untied world record. And uh, it was a pretty decent one. It lasted for about a year and a half. Il- Ilu would finally tie it. And I think it's time to watch a uh, to watch a, a new a new record here. Yeah, there's no no new records for over two years. Yes, this next round. after after Ilu um, got the after Ilu tied the 128. So and now so Clemens is watching the entirety of the of the cinema mm-hmm. to make sure the bot is as far along as possible. Yeah, yeah. it is kind of funny because Clemens is not... Uh, when I used to record webcam videos, digital camera videos, because I had to, I had no choice, um, when I was 16 and without a capture card, I would place I'd place them like boxes in front of a TV. And clearly Clemens is not even doing that. He's just like holding the camera <laughs> and... And it appears like he's not even trying to hold a steady. Like, it's no like, fucks given. It's, it's like he's, like, s- sitting on his lap while he's, like, eating something. <laughs> and so I imagine he's in, in high-res mode, 69, creating chaos. Mm-hmm. Was there anything wrong with Boss's 128? Yeah, there was... During the uplink, he was trying to pause buffer the door opening so that he could open it at the perfect time. But the ironic thing is, that is actually slower. If you keep speed and keep running against the wall, and then just use your normal reaction to open the door, it ends up being a lot faster. Especially in perfect dark. I mean, in Goldeneye, you save about 0.3 of a second by keeping full speed versus uh, just, you know, having a uh, stopped start. But in perfect dark, I think keeping speed is a lot more of an impact. So it could be at least half a second you're actually saving by keeping full speed. So here's where he's keeping full speed. And he's just going to use normal reaction to open that door and that's gonna make a big difference and i mean that would have just been a lack of knowledge at the time i i I remember being around when sort of the full speed meta came along in like 2006 7 or so and so boss just wouldn't have known well he definitely would have known Uh, i'm not sure if he uh, people knew there was a, a bigger difference in perfect dark than goldeneye it could have also been you know this is an insane run i know how fast it is based on the time targets. Uh, so I'm just, I don't want to mess it up because this is definitely going to be an untied record. So I'm just going to pause buffer and make sure I time it right instead of trying to go as quick as I can. So it could have been that as well. Yeah, no, a, a certainly a good run. November 2008. Um, there have been no records on the stage since 06 for over two years. But Clemens skipped 128 and went straight to 127 pretty solid here's another oh my god the music on this on this vid i'm at the lowest possible this is what we call unwatchable quality audio (laughs) but if i put this full blast you know i'll have it linked in the in the description of the video and uh if you want to destroy your house play this (laughs) video on full volume this is now perfect ace Almost a year and a half after Clemens got the 127. Mm-hmm. Ace was... Uh, was this... Uh, what uh, date did Ace get this time? This was now f- fully into 2010. February 2010. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ace was already a uh, PD uh, monster at this point. It's surprising that he even didn't have this record at this time already. Uh, yeah, I would say so. That Ace never got a... Uh... <laughs> that Ace never got a 128 or 127 until this point. 2010 is we're really getting to the to the modern times, I would say. Yes, and you'll see. Pay attention to what happens here on the third laser set. So it's an insane bot, but look what happens here. So this this was insane. Must be like a 47 or 46 bot. Yeah, it was definitely an insane bot. Ooh. So you can see that cam spike gets stuck there. And then, he gets stuck again coming out. So that was definitely at least a second lost uh, for those two mistakes. That wasn't even uh, a glitch or anything. That was a completely unforced error. 
Uh, it probably was high nerves because the bot was insane. But he just stood too far to the right on the third laser set. And the cam spy just got released slightly, a bit too close to the wall. And it caused it to get stuck. And he lost a full second. Wow. And that was that looked like a 127.3 maybe? Might have been 0.8, but it's a 127. Mm. Now we're it really that... doesn't matter. Yep. It doesn't matter what decimal it was. It was it was it was definitely going to be one twenty six if he if he didn't make any mistakes at the end. Yeah. So he he just literally stood too. He, he when he went to pause here and released the cam spy, he was too far to the right. Yeah. And when the cam spy comes out, it's kind of already stuck on the wall. That is uh, exactly. Yeah. You're already pushed for time. The the amount of time it takes to get the cam spy through and open these two doors. Is already kind of the perfect timing so that you when you come out of camp spy the laser is going to be just coming down for you uh so any kind of stuck any uh errors in releasing it and opening these two doors is definitely going to be a cost of time now the 127 even though 126 clearly was possible mm -hmm. 127 held up it would be another two years until early 2012 Ilu and boss would tie 127, two guys we already mentioned. And now, if I understand correctly, there were some theoretical strategies being tossed around in early 2012 now that might have been able to uh, save some time. Yeah, there was this super, super... Uh, they were reaching. They wanted something to to get rid of this bot lock and then what they were hoping for any kind of strategy that would uh enable them to to gain some time on these laser sets so it's this there was this really far-fetched idea okay because there's this guard that is sitting in a room just beyond the lasers and what they were hoping to do was in, they were trying to lure him out now the only way you can lure this guard out is by shooting next to him when that far door is open yeah, the, yes, uh, you're pointing to the door yeah. there. Now, the only way that door is going to be open is if the bot is coming through it uh, from the other side. So what they were planning to do, and what they were trying to, to create is a strategy where you would cut the cinema early so that when you got to the lasers, the bot is coming through the door and heading uh, towards you through the laser set. They would shoot and lure the guard out. He would come and stand at the far laser set. So when the bot would come, it would take down the third laser set and the guard would stand there so that the lasers would not reappear. Then when the bot would get to the second laser set and take that down, they would use their cam spy to, to block that set. So now you have the guard blocking the third set, the cam spy blocking the second set. And then when the bot took down the, the first set, you could just run through all three. Now, you would have to hope, I would imagine, that the guard, for one, ran to the somehow ran to the exact location of the third lasers, mm -hmm. which sounds absurd. Well, what you could do in theory is uh, lure him and then hide behind a pole, because there's, there's some poles there yeah. on the left side of the laser sets. So you can't hide from him. So as long as you alert him and hide from him, he's going to try and get to you. But he's only going to make it, and he's going to uh, sort of come up against the third lasers. And that's going to act as a barricade. Then when the laser, uh, the bot takes down the laser, you can sort of come out and alert him. So he just stands there and tries to shoot you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's actually getting him to that location didn't seem like something that was too outrageous. And I imagine that there wasn't anyone who had pulled this off in a tool assisted speed run or anything of, of that. Like this was Not just, yet. this was just theorized. People were just trying to figure out, wouldn't it be great if, and, and the good thing, the good thing about the strategy is, uh, you wouldn't there wouldn't be any messing around at the beginning of the level. So you could really strafe through the entire first half of the level as quickly as you could uh, to make it there while the bot's coming at you. So you wouldn't have to. So if if it did work, it would save a lot of time. Definitely, um, and it's it's sort of clever. Like you kind of have to imagine these insane strategies. A bunch of times before you find that, that works you know because if people mm -hmm. in hindsight think about the strategies that do work in speedrunning they are insane now what you know this this thread was made in early may 2012 what happened next carl 
seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, well, before I even mention what happened next, you can see Henrik and Dave there. They're talking about the strategy. So Henrik, uh, David tried it a few hours. He was not successful. Yeah. Henrik uh, ha had the idea himself a couple of weeks ago, and he gave it a, a fair amount of effort, but he couldn't quite get it to work. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, your eliteness who had just recently created the new elite ranking systems, which we all know and love today, arguably, or not yeah, arguably the best ranking system uh, for any speedrun game. He comes out of nowhere and sort of casually mentions that there is a way that you can skip the lasers with the invincibility cheat on. And he doesn't think it's a big deal at the time, obviously, by the way he brings it up. He's just like, yeah, yeah you, know, you can actually skip the lasers with invincibility on, you know, here's how you do it. Here's what the, the possible strategy would be. Uh, so if you want, you can, uh, is there anything in that post there that you could read that would let us know what he what he's saying? Well, yeah, I mean, he's just saying you can get through them. He hasn't been able to do it without invincibility, which is pretty mm -hmm. obviously significant. So you time the first cinema, the bot takes down the first laser set. So now if you can skip the next two, you're ahead of time. He goes, go up to the small ramp on the right, so that little edge that Ace got stuck on, for example. Mm -hmm. If you move to the very right, you can stand on top of this invisible wall. I, the way Perfect Dark kind of works is because, unlike Goldeneye, Perfect Dark does have like a Z position rendering. You can fall mm -hmm. off objects. So when you go up ramps or stairs, it can kind of have this unaffected Z leveling effect where you're kind of still on a, on a vertical position. And uh, basically it says if you can double crouch down from that little ramp, you can sort of squeeze through the lasers, I suppose. So it certainly sounds pretty wild. He, he's taking some screenshots here. Is there anything significant in these screenshots, Carl? Well, uh, this uh, this uh, for the bottom one is basically the most important screenshot. So, what he's saying is there's enough distance between the first, the bottom laser and the second laser for Joanna to actually fit through the lasers. Now, all that she needs to be able to do is get on top of the bottom laser. And this screenshot here is Joanna sitting on the bottom laser. Uh, the only thing is that. It's, it's seemingly impossible to get onto the laser because whenever you try, I mean, how would you even do it? You, you, when, you, when you're on the ledge and you just try and run into the lasers and get through, you just get bounced back. Uh, so there has to be a way to avoid the hitbox, you know, on the lasers zapping you back because as soon as you're touched by lasers, you're going to get uh, pushed back. Uh, so you have to be able to get in there without getting, without getting zapped. But... We're just not sure how that could be done at this point. And, yeah, so Clemens think he gets a 119 with invincibility on, without a... Yeah, because... See, see, the thing about invincibility is that you don't get zapped. So you don't get bounced back. So you can just sort of drop off the, the ledge on the right there and sort of just sit on the lasers, and they don't touch you. But if you try and do that with invincibility on, you just get pushed back. And you just land on the ground. Like like you saw in that video that you showed before. Definitely. And like, okay, here's here's a graph, I believe. This shows sort of you know, there's this is your player size, of course. And basically you stand up on this ramp on the right, you kind of fall down on top of the other laser, and you can squeeze through the two of them. But I mean my question is really how could you do it without getting bounced back? Like, how was this ever, you know? And all of the attempts that we tried failed. So they, we tried a lot. And it's, it was seemingly impossible at, at the time to, to do it. If, if it was doable, it would have to be extremely rare or, or something was just missing. Well, what happened a few days later, Carl? What happened? So after bashing their heads against a brick wall for many hours, uh, they actually did... You were going to say something? 
I guess we'll just watch the run and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very analogous to the depot warp, basically. I a mean, seemingly impossible trick that we've tried for years to do that we knew kind of might have been possible, but had never been replicated in a run. And we, they kind of just, after everyone's attempting to do it, something ha ha had to crack. I guess so. If you throw a million attempts at something, maybe it'll just happen. So the laser... So here he's using the cam spy to block the second lasers. Okay. So we can get through the first two. Yeah, now the, and... yeah, now the bot's there for the first. Now he just has to get, mm -hmm. skip the third. Mm -hmm. And it, it looks like he just did indeed that. Yeah, this is legit. This is, uh, this is without cheats or anything. So it is possible to actually get through the lasers, uh, but it is extremely precise. It's like pixel perfect, frame perfect, extremely degenerate. And X, Y, Z, hmm. positional perfect. Yeah. I mean, how much time, the record before this was 127. How much time could this possibly have saved? Hmm. I think it's a lot. A lot of time. Yeah, it's a lot. Special thanks to your eliteness for the laser glitch. Clemens for first getting it to work successfully. Boss for extra strat inspiration. I guess cold storage is the source of the music. <laughs> I've never... Who's cold storage? <laughs> I've never heard of it. <laughs> no, nor have I. Some obscure Euro... Is that techno? I'm not getting your audio, but is that techno? It, it's it's very electronic and bouncy, yes. Okay. One seventeen investigation agent. A truly remarkable speedrun, I think it's fair to say. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, just to explain a, a little bit more about what's happening with the glitch. There's, uh, we've already shown you the diagrams about the fact that Joanna can, can sort of squeeze through the bottom. But we're actually at... Uh, moving off a ledge and then in free fall, we are trying to strafe into the laser. So we're not just sort of falling off or, or, or going from one ledge to another. We're actually have to fall down and time it to the frame, um, strafing into the laser so that we can actually get into that gap and then land on top of the lasers uh, instead of hitting their side. So he's going down and as he's falling, he's starting to strafe into the, the lasers. And it just so happens that there is enough of a ledge that you can get through. So basically, he's, you can see he's at the Z position equivalent to this little ramp on the right. He's at that Z position. Mm -hmm. Now, as he falls, he turns into the laser. And at this yes. point, he has to hope that he's fallen and moved forward enough that he's on top of the laser. Mm -hmm. Incredible. So are we going to talk about... We did, the record didn't go from 127 to, to 117. Of, of course, Clemens would be a, a little bothered for sure. If, if you could see at the end of this run, uh, Illu did say Clemens was the first to get to work on a real run. Mm -hmm. Clemens did get a 125 and a 120. However, neither had video evidence. Yes. Um, as sort of most people have, uh, you know, in this day and age, the, the common term is no vid, no did. No did. There's no videos from any world records that went from 127 to, to 117, I think. Is that is that the case? I mean, you I know, historically, Clemens's name is etched in there as getting 125 and then 120, and then a Lou with 117. Um, yeah. But who knows what really happened? Uh, I th I th so we can say we can say David Clemens allegedly got 125 and then 120 before Illy got 117. No, it is funny, and, and uh, you know, you'll see if you're watching this. Clemens is in the thumbnail of the video. I thought there was going to be a lot more Clemens videos to show. And there really isn't. I think it's, um, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for why the proof, uh, the standards weren't quite the same in Perfect Dark as they were for Goldeneye, why there's so many fewer videos. But this mm -hmm. is indeed a Clemens, a Clemens mm -hmm. video here. Uh, he got one out, he got one out. We're proud of him. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Insane. So this, this run is uh, just a little bit cleaner in, in, in most aspects, using the, the Clemens kind of overall control no it's true and you can see like Cle this is 
decent. I mean, we all know and joke about Clemens and Mark quality from like 09 to 2012. This is okay quality for Clemens around that time. So it, Clemens doesn't even know why he uh, why he wasn't recording at the time, but he anyways. must have bought some new VHSs. His old destroyed tapes were no longer used. One sixteen. This is the day after it was 117. He's now improved it to 116. A mm -hmm. pretty, pretty damn good run. And uh, But the following day, Ilu would, would play it again and, and have a battle. There was a rivalry here between Ilu and Clemens. Uh, it didn't seem like anyone else was even in the picture at the time. I mean, obviously other people were getting PRs and everything, but no one was coming close to the times that Ilu and David we're getting uh, after this strategy was discovered. It was like a two-man race, basically, basically the whole way. Yeah, definitely. It seems like there was a bit of a log jam at one eighteen, which is which is good. I mean, it's it's um, you know nine seconds better than the previous record. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's not exactly. You know, Clemens and Inlu are the ones going far below it. Yeah, this is, I mean, it, this run here. I was just gonna say this run by Inlu is amazing. It's definitely a very, very good run. So he's, now we don't have to wait for the bot at all. So now now every movement is important. So we're really trying to get to objective one as quickly as possible, take the picture, and then get to the lasers as quickly as possible. It's all movement now. There's no bot luck. There's no RNG. It's all skill. So the quicker you can do everything now, the quicker your time's going to be. Definitely. And I mean, there is a lot of levels in Perfect Dark where they're kind of set on that you have to kind of wait for something, but now we've been able to transform Investigation Agent away from that. That was a really, really smooth laser skip. Pretty unbelievable. Everything about this run was awesome. He had a door open, even, at the beginning of the level. And again, now open doors are important. Uh, his bot timing was really good, so he barely got the camp spy in place in time to, to stop the lasers from coming up, and that's what you want. And then everything else was really, really smooth. And you see by the end decimal here, it's not even close. It's like a 105.2 or something. Uh, sorry, 115.2. Uh, yeah, wow. Pretty, pretty damn good. 115. Quite the record. Is he going to watch the whole cutscene? Yes. Yeah. We'll skip ahead uh, 20 or 30 seconds there and see the beautiful 115 end screen come up. Now, is there any way to go even even like this was pretty much a perfect run right yeah it what was an a, insane run would it i mean obviously you can skip lasers is there any way a double or triple laser skip could take place and would it even be faster hmm. well i mean obviously if you can skip one laser you can skip two so there's definitely no doubt there the thing is that the laser skip is extremely difficult uh and rare and at the moment, at this time, uh, they're using a single laser skip because the world record hasn't hadn't been perfected yet so that you would need anything else. So they're just getting better and better and better runs with a single laser skip because skipping one is a lot easier than skipping two. And why would you skip two when you can get the world record with one? So there's no incentive to go, to go lower. Uh, but with this 115... Uh, it was an insane run with a single skip. And they started really thinking, okay, we have to do something else to bring this down. No, it's true. I think someone mentioned the Weather Tenko Chaco Mountain strategy is a good example of it. I also think uh, Ocarina of Time on the Swordless Link strategy, when you just go with the, with the Deku sticks, uh, mm -hmm. is another good, good example. It's like so easy to hit a really hard trick once and get a record, that's the world record, and not push it beyond that, like not optimize it the same way you would normally without an insane strategy, right? Mm -hmm. And so certainly that deterred a lot of people. Um, but Clemens and, and Ilu were kind of having that battle, right? right? So... I'll explain what could be doable. Currently, they're uh, running up to objective one and uh, taking a photo and then uh, the reason they're running all the way up to it is so they can take a photo of it and then pick up the cam spy afterwards. 
and then then using that cam spy to block a laser set. So if they can block the laser set, they won't need to skip it. But if you uh, were to just leave the cam spy earlier on in the level and just ignore that for now and then come back to that later, for example, when you're doing the uplink, because as, as we've been saying, there's, a, there's an eight second period where we have to wait for a door to unlock. So if we could just leave the cam spy early on and do that objective when we're uh, doing the uplink, then all that time is going to be saved. But we don't have the cam spy at the lasers, so that means we have the bot who's going to, that's going to take down one set of lasers, and then we have to skip two, which is just going to multiply the rarity of the runs and, and how difficult it is. Definitely. But it could say potentially eight seconds. Wow. Uh, it may even be, let's have a think here. It may even be more than eight seconds. Well, because you, uh, yeah, you run in and and uh, yeah, yeah, hmm. it could be like, it could be a lot. So here's definitely a lot. Ilu. So now we're gonna we're going to time the bot to be at the first lasers when we get there, basically. Uh, what? what uh, we'll have to see. No, he's probably gonna time the. Uh... Uh, the bot to be uh, taking down the far laser. Yes. Yeah, the reason why that's better is because we can also time it so that if we're quick enough, the doors after the lasers are going to be open as well because the bot goes through those doors before getting to the lasers. So if, if we are quick, we can uh, get to the point where those doors are open. So we're not even just saving the time you know, from the cam spot. We're actually saving time not having to open those doors as well. There's the two. It he got there a bit early. He could have... Yeah. I guess that was one of the first ever double lasers hit. And he didn't have the timing quite down. Could have saved even maybe another second there. Unbelievable. So now he's starting the up uplink. He's gone into the cam spy where it was abandoned, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in here, take the picture, the holograph. There it is. Now he's going to flip out of the cam spy. The uplink's done. Now he carries on with the double laser skip. Now, I will also mention this wasn't the first double laser skip. Clemens again did it a few, uh, one or two days before with no video. But now Allegedly. This, this was Illu's response to that, a 107.15. That's truly remarkable, I would mm. certainly say. Wow. So now, now we've cut 20 seconds off so far from the old bot strap. Wow, that is, that's insane. What a, what a run by Lou. And that was really clean, two really clean double laser skips, I would so, say. So, uh, there was a clean laser skip, but we saw that the bot was uh, mistimed slightly, so that he had to wait for the, for the bot to take down the third laser set. So ideally, that wouldn't have happened. So there is some time still to take off. And it's, uh, and I would say it sounds like Ilu wasn't fully thrilled with his 107, knowing that that was the case? Yeah. He wasn't happy with the 107 because of the sort of obvious time losses. Uh, he really wanted to get a, a really good run with a double laser skip, so he spent the next week uh, degening this to get another run, and this is the run that he came up with. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll point out that the first laser skip by Clemens was done on May 6, 2012. That 107 was May 13, so that was all one week apart. And now this run is one week later on May 20th, 2012. Hey, switch that to uh, switch that to 360 because we're getting some frame rate issues. Oh sure, yeah. I mean, these vids are so uh, so fussy and troll back in the day. What can you say? It's true. So this all all of this saga took place over a two week period. Which is, I mean, you, you see it happen a lot, uh, where a new strat's found and people just go crazy for a couple weeks. There's one. There's two. Perfect skips. And it looks like the this following, that's down, that's good. That's good. It, it looks like he might have been able to get through that door. That was about half a second, a second. That wouldn't have been a, definitely wouldn't have been a full second. Uh... Definitely, at least half a second was lost there. You can get through those doors without that shutting on you. If it's timed perfectly. 
And I mean, like, again, like, it's not gonna be timed perfectly because we're already so far ahead of, like, what should be possible doing a double laser skip, pretty much perfectly timed, incredible execution. So a very small you know, mistake like that really is is nothing. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's not a huge deal, especially because Ilu had the, re the record by so much at, the, at this time. I mean, no one else was even challenging him. It's uh, and it's, ha it's hard to time that that bot because, uh, okay, you've got like a hundred runs that may not even get past the lasers. A thousand? And, yeah, a thousand even. So it's, it could be like one thing that goes wrong early in the level, a guard gets in your way, it, it's, you know, you lose like a couple of tenths and then, you know, when you get, by the time you get to the door at the end, it's not open. So it's not like you can just keep running that over and over again and get a perfect timing. You basically have one run out of many and it either is timed well or it isn't. And it's just extremely lucky to get one that has everything go right. I feel like a lot of times in these cases from like myself having played these insane strategies on different levels, you might get one record potential run a night in a four or five hour session. And that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. You play for a week, you might nail one if you're lucky. Illu yeah. nailed the 105. Now, at this point, Clemens had the you know previously claimed to have a record of 111. He then apparently lowered it to, lowered it to 110, but had no video. The mm -hmm. second place video at this time in May 2012 was a guy named Otto Oaksman. He was a top 10 Finnish player. He had a 118 on video. So Illu was 13 seconds ahead of the everyone else proven which is actually unbelievable no one else dared to do the to do the two laser skip i think a lot of that was because like they knew oh i do the one laser skip i get a 118 a 120 that's worth 95 93 points that's pretty good and the route to go to 105 it's like why would i even bother trying i lose mm. so far ahead of anybody else it's it's like the distance between the moon and mars you know it's like uh, I, I don't even know if I can get to 105 and there's, it's not like there's going to be any huge point game so I'm, I'm not even going to bother I mean Illu at, took the time so far ahead of everyone else that no one else even bothered really uh, trying to do this strategy and the strategy was just not used by anyone else for such a long time just because of how highly the 105 was considered uh, at the time when he got it no definitely and i mean here's a, a thread from that era where 50 cent uh who's a funny guy he, you know he, he, he used to go by brio then he changed his online pseudonym to 50 cent uh he made a poll what's the best world record in perfect arc of 2012 and as you can see it lose investigation 105 15 votes far ahead of clemens's 110 on infiltration another level uh, so far and away, this was considered the best record of 2012. And mm -hmm. it would go unchallenged for a long time. I think it, I should point out at least one of the reasons why Perfect Dark... Like, Goldeneye had some proof problems early on, but Perfect Dark had them for much longer. And I think a lot of that was because it was the less played game, for one. Mm -hmm. It was... People took it less seriously. There was less competition. You know, you'd have insane rivalries. I think people would kind of point it well, like... The world records in Perfect Arc were about as good as the world records in Goldeneye, but getting to the top 10 in Perfect Arc was like anyone who seriously played and was good could do it, whereas top 10 Goldeneye was an extreme years-long grind, right? So, yes. Perfect, you know, I, saying it was a joke is kind of taking it too far, but it wasn't taken as seriously as Goldeneye. The moderator at the time of this all was a guy, Theradel, some people who might know him from the Zelda communities and, and whatnot. He's, he's, he's a good enough dude for sure. Um, but he would only send out a proof call for world records once or twice a year. And mm. as a result, guys like Clemens could go indefinitely without claiming, without proving the records, especially if the record claims had then been beaten and there was sort of yes. less pressure for their, you know, 111 on, inf on, inf on uh, investigation. Uh, no one like a, a, the, the, the task of proof calling was 
made so monumental because it was left to once or twice a year. So imagine having six months of times to go through. There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be times that I missed out. I mean, Puppet Dark definitely wasn't... If you compare the Puppet Dark community to any other kind of speedrunning community, it definitely wasn't small. It definitely wasn't completely inactive or anything. But yes, compared to GoldenEye, it was definitely less played. And because the Elite uh, was major majority GoldenEye, people tended to not care as much about Puppet Dark and what was happening at the time. Uh, so, yeah... Even though the, the there was a policy that came out in 2007 which said every single world record needed to have a video, without exception, and even though rules were already in place to, to stop um, claims without videos, they still went through just because it was very lax at the time. Combined with everything that you said, the game was not played as much as GoldenEye, so people just cared more about GoldenEye, and the proof calls were just done so rarely at the time that mistakes were made. Definitely, and you, when you've kind of uh, procrastinated making the proof call for half a year, you're just going to keep procrastinating and not want to do it because it's now become mm -hmm. such a monumental task. Now, Carl, obviously, a lose one hundred five was highly regarded. The double laser skip is insane. Mm -hmm. No one wanted to go for it. What kind of madman who views speedrunning in a certain light to always pursue for the highest? precipice no matter what would it take for someone to come along and, and see if they could do the double laser skip and tie and lose 105 what kind of individual would be required for this task hmm. probably someone who doesn't know what he's getting into uh and is completely clueless about the level i mean that's what the level needed everyone everyone had this everyone was in awe of 105 and they feared it, and they, they didn't even want to try the strategy because it was just seen as too difficult. Uh, I'll actually recount a story of just how out of the loop I personally was at the time that Illu got this record, because I was actually meeting up with your Eliteness who made the strategy in uh, May 2012, because I was heading to America uh, for the Elite like annual meetup they do in Virginia and America, and I said to myself, I wasn't even uh, speedrunning at the time. I wasn't gaming or anything. I was sort of like doing my own thing. And I said, you know what? I want to go to America and just do the last kind of geeky thing and go all out and, and, and be a huge nerd. So I was kind of, for a lot of my life, felt guilty about being a nerd and felt guilty. And maybe other people made me feel guilty about speedrunning and being a degenerate or whatever. Um, so I suppressed it for a lot of the time. And then in 2012, I sort of had enough of my own confidence, enough of my own self-esteem to say, you know what, I'm a nerd. Uh, that's just who I am, that's what I love. And I wanna spend you know, thousands of dollars to go to America and completely nerd out and achieve something that I've wanted to do since all the way back in 2001, when I used to see people from the Perfect Dark Elite get together and they used to have these great meetups and just play PD and and do all this kind of stuff. Um, so to prepare for that, me, your eliteness, uh, Glenn Stevens and Greg Watmore would all get together and play GoldenEye multiplayer and just practice every weekend. Um, especially because I was going to America with your eliteness, who made the strategy, and and Glenn Stevens. Uh, and we used to get together every single weekend. And it was at that same time that we were practicing that your eliteness discovered the glitch and he even mentioned it at the time that he, there was a laser skip developed but i was so disinterested in perfect dark at the time that i didn't even like investigate it or ask questions about it or talk to him about it um so it's it's it shows you how out, how much i didn't care about the, the skip in general that i had the guy who actually invented it right next to me and I wasn't even asking him questions about it or how did you find it or or anything like that so um but I didn't have the same or that everyone else did I didn't have the knowledge to think that it was a, an extremely quick or hard trick so I just said okay so I was playing some perfect dark levels and I'm like okay I'll, I'll just I'll just watch the world record bit and copy that strap you know that's just how I normally do it 
Uh, and I didn't like the way that the skips were done, which is left strafe. You know how they sort of left strafe and then turn into the lasers. Uh, so I decided to try uh, changing strafes into the lasers. And... So you decide to try something yeah. new. Now, I mean, what I was going to say when you were talking about the trip to America in 2012 is mm -hmm. like, some people don't know, but there, I guess it still happens. There's this annual meetup. Not everybody from the community, but a lot of Goldeneye players and Mario Karters go. And there's an annual multiplayer tournament and Mario Kart tournament. And a lot of interesting things have happened in those over the years, for sure. Now, 2012 was one of the most significant ones because you were there from Australia. Now, mm -hmm. did, did you win that Goldeneye tournament? I came second. Clemens oh, Clem came first. Wow. So even with all that practice and setup, Clemens still bested you. And yes. did, did Jim... <laughs> who, who came third and fourth? Uh, yeah, Jim came third. And was there a fourth? It was, it was me, uh, well, okay, so the, it was a three-player tournament. I mean, okay. fourth is kind of becomes irrelevant because the sure. final was just three. Me, Clemens, and uh, Jimbo. Like, Clemens is a machine. Like, an absolute machine. I even uh, put up a $250 bounty for anyone who could beat me in a four-player match. And Clem took that one as well. I came second in that. But I was so confident because I've never been... I, I'm, I'm the best player that I've ever experienced like I, i've never in australia at least i've never uh met anyone who's been able to challenge me and i love goldeneye multiplayer it, it is legitimately one of the most fun things that i could do i absolutely love it and i was just like yearning for someone to to challenge me so i said hey i said on the message boards 250 dollars for anyone who could beat me they and they all think that that's like a joke they and, kind of think you're being cocky, like yeah, you know? it's like cocky. But I but imagine having something that you love and no one's really giving you a challenge, and that's how I felt. It wasn't like I'm so good that uh, you can't beat me, and I'm gonna this two hundred fifty dollars is just making a mockery out of it. It's legitimately, hey, I'm gonna put this incentive for someone else to care about it to get good, so I can have a challenge. And yeah, I went to VA, and David Clemens was my first legit challenge is definitely an absolute machine it, it reminds me of and i know it's kind of a, a joke setting of it but it is people who are really good at something pursue someone to be their equal and give them a good challenge um mm. i'm reminded of the movie ricky bobby well, i forget who, what the character's name uh of of uh of the french guy driving the perrier car is um sasha baron cohen but at one point he tells ricky bobby like I love racing against... I came to America to race against you because you're the only guy at my level and I want that challenge, mm. right? And I'm sure, there are, I'm sure there are good real-world examples of this. But yet, when you're really good at something, you, you, need, you need an antithesis. You need someone to push you even further because when mm. you're that far ahead of anybody else, nobody else can kind of understand how good you are. And you want someone to... As much as you like have a rival and you might dislike that person... You want someone to understand what it's like. And, and there's, there's something, there's some uh, unique feeling about encountering a challenge and overcoming it that you can't get anywhere else. And it's just not fun to just win every time. You want, and especially if it's easy, you want to have that adverse adversary there pushing you. And then you want to really want to win and you want to, you want to have that uh, feeling that you get when you overcome that. Uh, even if you don't win necessarily, just that that process, that journey of facing something extremely challenging and trying to trying to win is a thrill that I love. And I really wanted that. And I did actually get that too. I, I think it's the thrill of, of many great men to always be pursuing that mountain top to climb. And sometimes it's gonna be too hard and they'll fail, but if it's an adequate challenge for them, that's what they're searching for. And now, one more point about that trip that I, I want to bring up is, is you kind of, did you kind of think that was going to be your last hurrah of nerdiness? And after you've done that, you were going to move on and stop playing games entirely? It was a last hurrah, yeah. I saw that at the time. Yeah, and I think many of us, I certainly can relate, in my mid-20s, kind of coming to grips like, 
you kind of decide like you're your own man now you can do what you can take control of your destiny and it got to a point where it's like am i still really going to be playing these games speed running streaming and certainly i can relate to being like i want to just get this last world record and then move and then forget about it all move on and it comes to a point where you realize like maybe this is what i'm destined to do is to nerd out and be this nerdy guy and really master it and do it well and that's kind of why i'm still here doing these speed lures and videos and whatnot and i take it after that last hurrah you met your adequate challenge you realized maybe this is what you still have to do you still have to play these games there is always i think it's universal and you've mentioned it before there is an eternal struggle i think for me and i believe in most speedrunners or all speedrunners where we love speedrunning but we know that there is a whole world out there of possibility uh, that, you know, there's a, there's a cost to speedrunning where everything else that's possible isn't being done, you know? Nothing is manifesting out there. And I have never been a full degenerate and, like, you know, someone who just plays video games and doesn't care about the outside world. Like, I always had a passion for other things. And there's always a battle going on, like, I really want to do this, but I really want to, but I really want to play games too. And, and that's the struggle that I was always dealing with. So I felt like if I could do this thing, then I could, the, the battle would be won and I could just move on and um, achieve all my other possibilities. But it really may be an eternal struggle that is never won uh totally by either side and, and i may always just come back to speed running always come back to video gaming and i and my mission is just to balance the two and try and get some sort of healthy system working out where i could do do everything i want no absolutely and it is just so hard because i'm sure you and i and many people in chat and watching this video have been there and they want to stop playing games or stop any sort of thing that they don't think is the productive path of life and maybe you can realize that maybe it is and maybe that's what you're supposed to be doing although of course uh you know you want that balance as well now i think suffice to say you felt the call of the games once again mm -hmm. you decided let's play some investigation agent you didn't know what you were getting into yes take us i was through, gonna... take us through this run so there's some build up to this run. I, I wasn't aware of how how the tricks was uh, tricks were because I didn't have that all that everyone else had, like I mentioned. So I went into it just I'll just do a double laser skip. Didn't think it was going to be a big deal. Uh, so I ended up getting like a 109 and then a 107, 106. Uh, and when I got 109, I'm like, hey, this strat isn't that hard. See, the reason it wasn't hard for me specifically was because I was doing it differently to how Ily was doing it. To how everyone else was doing it. Everyone was doing a left strafe left uh, laser right. skip. Yeah. Well, just just left and then turning into it with left strafe. But here I do a full uh, strafe change into it like that. Mm. And that just that just takes out of the equation a lot of the variables like of what you have to control. So I, I no longer have to turn at the right angle. I could just sort of all I have to do is time the point at which I strafe change. And it, it's, it's a lot easier than how they were doing it before. It's sort of like, you know, before it was like frame perfect, pixel perfect, three dimensionally perfect, uh, mm -hmm. angle perfect, and you were able to cut out one of those necessary bits of perfection to make it a little exactly. bit more simple. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I saw you had the door, you had both doors open after the third set of lasers. This is looking like a pretty good run. Yes. Everything was in my eyes, really well done. Just a smooth run with uh, two laser skips. One oh five tied world record. IPKJ. I guess in uh, I guess in Perfect Dark the rankings actually say I L for Ilu and mm -hmm. uh, S T for you, Sim Threat. Okay, so I got this time two years and two months. So Ili is 105. 
was uh, the next proven time was Clemens was one sixteen in two thousand fourteen, and so the time was still like an eleven second proven untied in two thousand fourteen when I went for it. So it, it was funny because like me and, uh, by the time I got one one hundred five, me and Ilya had one hundred five, and then the next bet best proven was like one single laser skip. Yeah, which is really funny that there's just no gap. There's no gap between the two. In a way, it's kind of like you've kind of met your match again in on this stage now, Investigation Agent, mm -hmm. right? Two men who have gone so far ahead of the competition and ended up in the same spot. And was was lower possible, Carl? Lower than 105? Lower, lower at the time seemed like a really big ask. There was one thing to note. Can we go back to the laser skips? Yes. I, I think I know what you're gonna you're gonna point out here. So you can see here, bang, I hit it. And see how my health bar comes up? So that means I got zapped by the laser and I got zapped on both uh, skips. It is possible to get through, and you saw it in uh, some previous vids here, when they did the laser skip, they just went straight through. They didn't actually get touched by the lasers at all. It is possible just to get zapped, but still land on the lasers. Uh, it is slower though. It does lose approximately half a second. So you'll see when it, on Ilya's 105, he didn't get zapped. Yep. And on my 105, I got zapped twice. And on Ilya's 105, the door came down and closed on him before the end. And on mine, yep. it didn't. So we kind of just evened out by the time we got to the end and we both got 105. So even with the, the current strats here, 104 did seem possible. So, cer okay, so certainly 104 seemed possible. Mm -hmm. Now, again, your 105 was 2014. It would be a little while later until anyone would touch investigation again. I mean, you and Alu had a different rivalry on another level, right? Well, even can we go before that? Sure. Uh, in 2015 with that new discovery. Yeah, so, okay, so this... I guess the thing with especially Perfect Dark, but speedrunning as a whole, is like... There are often times when something is discovered, but it's so poorly brought up to the public. Like, one or two people will be like, oh, this is faster. And maybe they won't share it with anybody. Maybe not intentionally, but just they're kind of not social beings. And it just doesn't get brought up to the public attention, right? So this is a, yeah. this is a boss getting a record on Airbase Agent. And... He, so he drops the the cam spy off, mm -hmm. and there's some tr like what ex what exactly? Okay, so there was a, a strat here where you could warp the stairs by activating the, the cam spy. But what was yes. sort of the, the byproduct of this? So generally, when you go and release the cam spy, it takes half a second. There's a process of the sort of unpausing and the cam spy being. Uh, released. It takes half a second. So generally, when we release the cam spy and then get out of it to run off. So, for example, in a uh, investigation, we just all we're doing is releasing the cam spy. So we're not doing anything with it. We just want to get rid of it. That process takes like half a second right. before to, to release it and then come. Right there. Yeah. So, so we're not actually moving the cam spy. All we're all we're trying to do it do is offload it. Now, there was some strategies developed where we can actually warp up staircases and stuff if we're standing under the staircase and we release the camp spy or we go into the camp spy. When we get out of it, we're now standing on the stairs. And boss figured out that you can actually deploy the camp spy in a single frame if you hold the pause button when you release it. So uh, that was sort of developed out of necessity or by accident because it was being used in diff for different ways, for different strategies. And then Boss said, hey, if we can just release it in a frame instead of half a second, then on, on these other levels, it's going to be really useful. On and every other level with a cam spy, which is like, uh, like three or four or more? Yeah, there's three or four levels, yeah. But I think I asked Boss about it. He said that he wasn't didn't know that it was not known. So it's like he, he didn't know it was a new thing. 
now this run I'm showing is from July 2015. You didn't know of this until early 2016 when you saw yeah. it in another run. A Green Unet got an untied on airbase special agent. Yes. That's the run you watched and then you learned the strategy almost a year after it had been kind of out there. Yeah. And Boss just didn't know that other people didn't know about it. Yeah, I mean, Boss's run is not an untied, and I probably didn't watch it. Yeah. Um, but uh, Green Unet's run was an untied, and I'm more interested in untied, so I watched that vid. And I saw some tricks that he was doing using this quick release cam spy. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Because I'd never seen anything like that. So I asked around and had to dig my way, you know, dig dig and uncover this trick that was not being widely uh, discussed or, or, you know, people weren't telling other people about it. Uh, but I eventually learned what it was, yeah, in, in 2016. And so, coupled with the two things you pointed out in you and Alu's 105s, the door mm -hmm. being partially closed on Alu, and you getting zapped by the lasers, mm -hmm. combined with this now half a second save on the deployment of the camp spy, which is finally kind of known now among Perfect Dark Speedrunners, this mm -hmm. seems like there's some time to be saved on that 105. Yeah, it ends up even being more than half a second. Because we're running in a, in a, in a direction, if we release the camp spy in half a second, we end up going to a dead stop by the time that we get back out of the camp spy. Yes. But if we're running in a certain direction and it just takes one frame to release the camp spy, and then we can continue running, most of our momentum is, uh, is preserved. So it actually ends up saving more than half a second. It, it almost saves like a full second, basically, or almost a full second by the time, by the time we get to to the next part of the level. You you don't lose full speed. And well, you, you don't lose. Well, you lose full speed, but not as severe. Joanna, jo Joanna has momentum. So when you stop, it's not just a dead stop. And when uh, Joanna starts running, it's not just like from zero. It's not binary there's an acceleration period. And I'm not talking about full speed, I'm talking about literally I mean, from a dead stop to moving. You can see it here, right? You deploy it and like you've really slowed it. You can see that visibly. Mm -hmm. And on boss's deployment, um, you can definitely see him not lose as, you can see like there's deployed in a yeah, frame and now like he's, he's going much faster at that point. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, this finally came to light in April 2016 when you watched mm -hmm. Green Unet's Untied. Uh, just before then, though, you had another rivalry with Ilu again. Yes. So, uh, to set the stage for what's happening next, uh, there was a race for Streets 111, and Ilu was grinding for that for a long time, and I did snipe it from him, and I got 111 first. And... Uh, he was he was still thinking about that. He wanted payback for me sniping that because I got 111 and then he got 111 two days later. Mm -hmm. So uh, what happened was, I mean, me the way I work is whenever I go for a new record or I'm excited about the game, I love to talk about it. And I love to, has, to tell everyone, hey, I'm going for this time. You know, how cool is that? It's all exciting and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Ilu knew that I was going for it because uh, because of my vocality. So he was like, okay, Carl's going for that. I, I really want to beat him and I really want to get him back. Uh, can I also mention one thing, uh, the David Clemens thing, uh, just before we go on to this run. But 105 was always seen as really good, really good runs. And the new Camp Spider deployment trick was uh, discovered, and uh, I wanted to go lower, and I was talking to David Clemens about it, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, we can save a second with, with this new strategy. And David looked at the 105, and he comes back, and he's like, yeah, you can save a second there, and he's like, also, the run's slow. And I'm like, uh, no, it's not slow, man. What are you talking about? It's it's legit. It's It's a clean run. And he's like, no, nah, dude, it's just, like, slow. He, and I, I... He thought 105 just wasn't that great of a run. 
yeah, he just said it wasn't that great. Just just a slow run. And I was taken aback by that. And I mean, in all honesty, if I examined the runs, they weren't they weren't amazing. And you could see that we weren't trying to eke out every tenth at every point. You know, we were killing guards, we weren't doing full strafe in, in some sections. And I think what's what happens on levels like these is when there's like a a, a big glitch or a hard trick that has a low probability or a low odd, uh, it's easy to forget everything else that's going on and sort of get into a tunnel vision of just getting to the trick and hoping to pull it off and sort of not really looking at the minute details everywhere else. And especially when tricks have low odds, it's easy to... Like, it's hard to keep your attention 100% of the time when you have to really keep your attention on this one particular thing. Uh, so when I did go back and re-examine the runs, yeah, they were slow, okay? So when uh, I was going to go for lower than 105 using the new tricks, I really paid attention to really strafing as quickly as I can, cutting all the corners, not worrying about guards, just head down, uh, save every tenth I could, and it just made an absolutely huge difference. And he was right; like my my runs ended up being significantly faster on average, just by really concentrating on the small details. Yeah, just you get so tunnel visioned on executing a really hard trick twice that you're not optimizing every single tenth, every single frame, which is something you're usually good at. Like that's how you got Dan fifty two, all sorts of other great records. But you're so dead set on the double laser skip that it's hard to do that. And I guess it took exactly. Clement, Clemens' kind of bitter comment, or, you know, bitter not be, might, might not be the, the wrong word, but kind of gave you a, something that stung a bit. And then you mm. realized the truth. So you and Alu were both trying to go for the untied, lower than 105. Mm. And, you know... The race was on. The race was on. And this happened, and uh, I'm going to be quiet because this is a, a live stream. You can hear the runner talk you through it. So here's the new deployment. Much less speed loss there. Oh uh, yeah, you might have to go 360p, dude, because to, to avoid any frame issues. Clean skip. Zapped, but but through. That long pause is the, oh shit, this is a run pause. Definitely. Uplink started, goes into camps by. You see how everything is slow? <laughs> really yeah. taking care, you know? He said, I got that, I got right there. He's like, I got the untied. Got it. Got the fucking untied. Wow. So he knows, it's obvious now it wasn't me that got lower, but yeah. he knows, he knows that he got something good here already. Oh my God, it's one on three. <laughs> fucking yes, dude. I got called back from the 111. He sniped 111 from me. I fucking sniped 103. Holy fuck. You lose pretty pumped. He got you back for sure. I was a bit pissed too, to be honest. He started playing it after I did. I really felt like I was going to get it first. You had the vision for 103 or 104. Mm -hmm. And he, he Fuck saw yeah, you baby. and... Investigation Master is back. 
the investigation master's back. I believe now we're going to see him come on and uh, and show Holy up on fuck webcam. Balls indeed. <laughs> Holy fuck balls indeed. That's just the rush. <laughs> me, me, me and Ilya have definitely had a lot of rivalries. There's, there's quite a few levels where me and him have been going for a record, you know? And, and uh, through the years... Oh, he's dancing. We'll, we'll just watch this. I mean, he doesn't say anything when he's dancing, but... So you can you can go on. Yeah, it's not just investigation in the streets. It's also other levels, too. So it's always funny. It's always fun racing against <laughs> Illy. And we kind of have this known... An agreement that we're, we're rivals sometimes. Illu has kind of always been the guy who's known to go for insane records that like don't seem feasible by mortal men. Mm -hmm. And you kind of are the one who always like he kind of he kind of goes for them like spiritually, you know. He kind of has this like I'm that insane, I'm going to go for it. And then you kind of come around with this logical approach uh, and and execute it. Another example is obviously Streets, and then Defection 5 was like this, ma yes. again, that's another time we talked about earlier, this kind of magical time. Uh, Illu got it in 2010, and it wouldn't be until five years later when you went for and finally matched Defection 5, and now a lot of people have it. Um, yeah. w when Illu gets a time, people think, oh my god, it must be something incredible. And then you kind of come around the logical approach and show people no it's like it's it's just a game you guys can do it too you know so mm -hmm. we, was... we, tend, oh, we, we tend to have go for a lot of the same times like he even went for dan 52 as well Best with the, the 24 hour time. stream Ages. uh and we both have investigation special agent as well it just it's just a coincidence how we we a lot of the times we just land on the same time and a lot of the time we're both way ahead of everyone else just because of the types of strategies that we go for are usually pretty degenerate and we tend not to have that much fear of these weird and uh low uh chance strategies no definitely i'm just gonna play with the uh the last 30 seconds of him going off here and then uh we'll carry on uh, la, 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 la. <laughs> oh i'm going crazy yes 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 yes, yes. The best thing I've done in like ages. <laughs> the best thing he's done in ages. Look at my beard. The beard gains. A very funny and likable guy. That's what he's he's a huge star on all these speed lore episodes for sure and there he is showing up again mm -hmm. in perfect dark now his elation was maybe not too long lived you were obviously playing for this record and uh i mean i guess i guess i just roll the vid the next the very next day you got this run and uh, again mm -hmm. take take us through any anything significant uh, that that you did here Nothing really significant, Strat Rise. Just, yeah, just a very... A any... Very clean. Again, the, the timing of the bot and the lasers and everything was really good. Uh, but you can see, like, even before the lasers, it's may not you may not remember, but maybe if you watch a YouTube video or whatever, you can go back and check out my 105 or, or slower times. But here, before the laser set, you can really see that me and Ilu are heads down, just strafing straight to the doorways, trying to get the best angles, not really looking anywhere else, trying to get as many tents as possible. So that's a zapless skip, that's all good, then I got a zap there. Uh, but the lasers came up, came down perfectly there, so I could get, get through those doors uh, pretty cleanly. Yeah, this looks... I mean, if, if I got any quicker through the lasers, I probably would have even had to wait uh, for the third set to be lowered before I could even get through. And, and that might have cost you time because then your yeah. momentum wouldn't have been as high. Exactly. <laughs> and this timing of the, the door open here was frame perfect. Yeah, that looks really, really good. So now the 103 is definitely a lot cleaner than the 105s. 
There it is. No cutscene waiting. Investigation Agent 103. May 5th, 2016. A day after it lose 103. And here we are more than two years later. And this is still how it all shakes down on Investigation Agent. Ilu and Carl 103, Boss 108, a bunch of guys at 110, and so on. So still you two are that far ahead of everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you, you can see Special Agent is a story for a different time, but again, you two are still both very hot, far ahead of the rest of the field uh, with some more laser skips. So there you have it. I mean, 103... Is lower possible, Carl? What do, you, what do you have to say about the current state of investigation? Is such a thing even possible? Yes, it is. Uh, 102 is definitely possible. It, it will require some degeneracy, though, for sure, because the, the, run, the 103 is already really tight. You could get two Zappa skips, and I think you could really set up uh, the, 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 the tricks a lot quicker. So, you know, it's really kind of precise where you have to run up to the laser, stop at the right spot, double duck, and then try to do the, the glitch. You can really YOLO that. A lot of the time, though, when you YOLO the, the setup, you do hit the lasers or it just doesn't really work out. It's very, very finicky, very tricky. But it is possible to do everything a little bit quicker. I have considered going for it, and it's definitely something that me or Ilu may may look at in the future. We may wait for further strategy optimizations, or it might just be a case of, all right, I'm going to just put my life on hold for a moment and see how fast we can get these laser skips. Because it's just me and Ely pushing it right now, and, and that we're only two guys. So who knows in the future when more people actually really put effort into the level, what they come up with, what kind of techniques they use, uh, and see how far we can push it in going lower than 103. No, and I mean, it seems like there's obviously no rush, nothing imminent. You're right, it might take a new innovation to re-inspire anybody. And uh, who knows, maybe this lore episode will get a lot of new people playing Perfect Dark and a lot of people playing this level in particular. So something may come up, as we've seen happen a lot in the past. I mm -hmm. should point out that actually uh, this 234 and Perfect Agent Carl just got the other day the Untied. And now that doesn't use any... Actually, what, what is funny is that early on clip that I'd been showing of bouncing off the lasers was from your 234. So yeah. on Perfect Agent you don't have to skip the lasers, but you went for it there. It would have saved like two seconds or so. Two seconds, yeah. And it just didn't happen. Uh, but clearly, maybe you're still playing to lower perfect agent. Yeah, I would love to get. My goal is to have a perfect agent run with a skip. That that's currently what I was working on. So, and can we mention that the the special agent uh, strategy? The reason why you've got me and Ilu both on two minutes, and then everyone else is seven seconds behind, is because we are so far the only two people who have done a triple laser skip. Do you want to show the triple laser skip? Yeah, let's, we'll, we'll show the triple. Obviously there's like a couple other objectives here. We have to like mm -hmm. do stuff in the labs. Okay, so, go. and the 207s and slower have no skips at all. No skips. And so you and Alu are so mad. You've both gone for triple, oh, so, and you even miss one. We miss one, yeah. And it's, you still, I mean, so it's kind of funny how on such a complicated level, with a lot going on, you both make an error, and you still end up on the same time. And uh... That's bizarre. That's absolutely bizarre. Uh, he, it's funny, he, it must have been fate, okay, because <laughs> his run was actually, I missed a door press, uh, I think, it, I'm not sure if it was, yeah, here. Oh, yeah. I missed yeah. a door press, okay, and I lost 159 because of that, so I ended up on two minutes, and then on Ilu's run, his run was faster than mine at the end, but he absolutely uh, choked the end. I'll, and, and... Yeah, I'll, I'll put, I think I remember it. I'll put on his end, actually, in a sec, after this. 159, a very low, like, 2 minutes very point low. 2. Yeah, it, it should have been, it, all the time targets were saying 159, it was just an, a mistake by me. Uh, Ilu made an absolute dog's breakfast of the end. 
uh, on his run. So, and he landed on two minutes. So obviously, the PD gods want me and Ilu just to have the same time on these two levels. So after all those years, the gods, the spirituality, the religion still plays a big part. Oh, so did you show his uh, bit before this, uh, at the end of the skip? Let's go Just, from... Uh, so a bit, bit earlier. Oh, before the skip? Yeah, here we go. No, you're there. Okay, Just okay. Just go. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, at the skip, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. misses the first one. So he misses the one. first one, just like I did. Zapolis. Zapolis. Wow. That's just insane to get three Zapolises, like, just like that. So now he's freaking out. Yep. He knows it's a world record untied pace. Uh, yep. He oh, doesn't he's, even he's, unduck. He's still crouched. Which, yeah, he's still crouched. It's very slow. Oh my god, yeah, he's he's just uh, having a hard a hard time of it. Wow, that is. <laughs> and then when he gets out of the goes to the gas by, he just goes the wrong way. Oh, <laughs> so the thing is, when you release the cans by, you really have to be careful about holding the joystick in a particular direction because the cans by oh. really turns sharply when you get into it. And he would all you have to do there is turn slightly left. But obviously because he's nervous, he goes into the camp spot and he's like really turning left. So he ends up turning around the wrong way and goes a completely different uh, direction there. This run definitely should have been uh, at least 159 as well. Wow. I'll... And so I imagine uh, those times are still out there and really mm -hmm. probably only you two would dare to go for lower on, on those as well. So... Yeah, I mean, that took me 20 hours to get one run. Wow, unbelievable. On uh, Special Agent. And now, I was going to say, I mean, you had you had an idea, Carl, to possibly mm -hmm. open up, uh, you know, see if we could do a, a, a QA and a if any of you guys have questions about Investigation Agent. And I was going to ask a question first is, um, like, what, free, what percentage of the time do you get a laser skip? on all the times you run to the lasers and try it? Uh, I would say maybe 10% per skip is probably what my odds are. But here's the thing. That's the first skip, but then when you actually get a skip, you kind of get nervous, or at least I do. I immediately... Everything immediately becomes 10 times harder when uh, you're doing the second skip because you've gotten the first skip cleanly. So I think the second skip odds are a lot lower than the first skip. So it might be like 20%. So it might be like to get a, a, a clean two laser skip run might be one in a couple of hundred runs. Well, I mean, if, if they're all 10%, then it's one in a thousand for a triple skip. So pretty yes. insane. Um, okay. Technical stream. How active is Perfect Dark Spirit community? There's a few people playing every day, I would say. Mm -hmm. especially, especially now with the, the fantasy leagues going on yeah that's There's... that's true so in the summertime what we do in the elite often is like six captains will draft new players and make a team and however many points they get on the rankings in those months is like fantasy points and they build their fantasy elite perfect dark gold night team so there's a lot of people playing perfect dark in the summers traditionally for sure yeah there's even some big names like uh, Woda is playing PD at the moment uh, and getting some really good times. There's a couple of new players coming in, like Lake Demon was getting some really good times as well. Uh, so there's like actually a decent amount of activity activity right now, for sure. What's uh, Fletcher saying? How bad is the roundup on this level? I mean, I would say, I guess it's not bad at all because yeah. like a lot of the times you're going for a time so fast or like you're not just pushing the 10th at the end, right? And there's not much going on. Right at the very end of the level, there's not much lag. So yeah, the roundup is is not much at all. I think anything 0.9 or below should be should be good. Should you pick up Goldeneye or Perfect Dark Spearing first, whatever one you prefer, honestly? Like there's no rhyme or reason to it, I would say. Goldeneye is simpler to get into. I mean a lot of the Perfect Dark strategies are pretty complex. And it may be daunting, even. 
uh, I would say Perfect Dark is slightly harder to control, and there's a lot more finesse required. Um, but it's it's it kind of I don't even I can't even relate to that question sometimes because I started playing Goldeneye in I started speedrunning Goldeneye in like 1998 because I played the game and I loved it, and then I started speedrunning Perfect Dark because at the time I I played the game and I loved it. So it's hard to tell someone else what they should play, you know, unless they, they, they just... I think you should just play whatever game you like more, really. I think that is hard for guys like us to give advice to new speedrunners because, like, yeah, we started playing these games just because we enjoy them so much. And, like, it's kind of natural to us to speedrun the games. Like, we can't come at it from the perspective of someone who's, like, wants to pick up speedrunning. It's such a foreign thing to us. Like, we've mm. always we've always just speedrun our whole lives. But yeah, it I mean, wasn't speedrunning when we started. It's not like, exactly. oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start speedrunning. It's like, we did it, we just wanted to go fast. That's it. And then later, it, was, it turned into this speedrunning thing. It, yeah, exactly. It just evolved into this entire community. Do you think a sub one minute investigation is possible? I think it would be possible. I, I think, like, I obviously have very minimal knowledge in the level. I have a 130 back in the day before laser skipping was a thing, and that was three seconds off the non laser skip record. So, uh, you know, I, I have some experience, not very much, but mm -hmm. just knowing how speedrunning works, like, you could probably have the most insane laser skip imaginable like you could probably just fly right to the lasers and just zoom through but it would it would be insane um mm. so i think there's a lot of time to be saved on those laser skips i would say for sure can i address a question by mw about uh he yeah. said he had like a 124 or something should he do the one skip or the two skip and i would advise anyone just do the two skips you could like you could try to grind out a one laser skip run but honestly i think it's just better time Better time saved to just go for the two skips. Even if you get a bad run with two skips, it's still going to be a really good time. But just for longevity, you want to get good at the skips. Sit there with invincibility on, um, kill the, all the guards and just camp at the lasers and just try and go. And so you go at you, do the skip. If you don't get it, you just try again. If you do get it, you don't go all the way through the lasers. You just sort of back out and go back onto the ledge and just keep practicing that over and over and over and over and over again and get a feel for it. And then the two laser skip strategy really isn't that hard. And if you plan to have a good time in the future, you want to sort of invest the time into learning the skip well enough so that you can do the two laser skip. I think you are one of those guys of the mindset that you should always go for the more advanced strategy for sure. There are some guys like a, a Jimbo is a good example of someone who will just have a goal to have like a 10th place time on a level, use whatever strategy is necessary for that time. But you and, and like Grav is another guy who's like, just go for the best strategy and mm -hmm. it's going to be better for you in the end. Um, I mean, uh, my, my mentality is, uh, this may not apply for everyone, but at least my mentality is if someone else can do it, I can do it. And there's no reason why, if, if it has been done before, why I shouldn't at least give it a really good go and try to replicate it myself. I don't think there's any strategies out there that you know only one person can do and everyone else is kind of like not good enough. I think really, if there's a strategy out there that's better, you should really try and, and use that strategy. And if you're failing it for whatever reason, it's probably a lack of knowledge or you're just not seeing something the way that you should see it. And I would suggest asking people who are doing it correctly for advice and really trying to get a better understanding of what is holding you back. But I don't think anyone's really, like, not good enough or or shouldn't go for the, the better strategies. Is there any strategy that exists right now in Goldeneye or Perfect Dark that you yourself would not want to go for? Like, you wouldn't want to go play Frigate Double O, I imagine, right? But, I mean, that's kind of more luck-based. But, like, is there yeah. a strategy that's mostly skill... That even you're like, no, this is too degenerate. Mm. Not off the top of my head here. Uh, Strategy-wise, there's no strategy that I probably wouldn't do. Even the crazy ones like Runway Double O Agent, uh, I still think 
it's just a see i don't mind learning i don't mind studying i don't mind watching video videos over and over again and sort of figuring out what's going on a lot of people just like to play levels and sort of brute force their understanding of what's happening or they just want to go with the flow and just hope they figure it out as they go and it's really annoying when they have to when, when it's not working out and they don't know why but they're not willing to study but i'm very happy to study levels because i'm interested in the minute details and and all that kind of stuff so for me personally uh there's no strat that i wouldn't really do and i'm even interested in strats that haven't been executed yet something like um aztec double o no body armor uh, is, is or even a... the even the like getting or aztec agent with the crouch strat for example yeah, actually no, getting a good run no one's pulled that off yet um shy guy asks you know how do you get to spear and goldeneye where should you what should you start working on go just go to google type in the elite goldeneye forum click on it there's a thread goldeneye guide for beginners and that should really help pretty much anybody uh buju simo carl when are you going for chicago 14 so we have a ah, good funny. video of it yeah funny you bring that up because i just found a controller that has a really good stick now uh, chicago 14 needs a very good stick it absolutely requires it so uh i said last night in my discord that i just found a new stick and i want to go for chicago 14. so that's going to be very soon i'll make some i'll have i'll give it a legitimate go and i'll put some time into it there we have it i i think that's pretty much it carl what, what do you think i'm happy to finish with this all right my friends that was indeed perfect dark speed lore uh, I truly hope you enjoyed learning about the evolution of speedrunning this level, Investigation Agent, the twists, the turns, and the legends that came about. A huge thanks to my special guest, Carl Jobst. Anything you want to say on your way out, Carl? Thanks again for having me on. I had a really good time. I hope everyone enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, if this is received well, then I certainly would love to do some more episodes and, and cover some other levels and get into the history of Perfect Dark. Definitely. And, and we'll see. I have a feeling people are going to really uh, enjoy having the kind of back and forth and having your expertise was, was really cool. A lot of times in Goldeneye lore, you'll be throwing in an extra nugget of knowledge in chat. So having you in person was super cool. And that's all. Thanks, guys, for joining me and watching this episode of Speed Lore. I think we might do it again sometime with Perfect Dark or maybe even another game. So in the meantime, everyone, stay true, and I'll see you in the next stream or video. Wow, it was truly amazing. Um, I am going to run off Carl. Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to head off. Yeah. Uh, uh, this was, I, I really enjoyed this. Yep. And um, I felt great. I would love to do this again. And uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. I'm, I'm going to go play Surface 2 Agent for 46. I really want 46. I have to get it quickly because Grav's gunning for it as well. So it's like an epic r race right now. So time is of the essence. Awesome. That's something sick to see. So uh, yeah, take care. I'm going to close the the call now and uh good luck i'll see you in chat i'm sure thanks see you guys later oh this could be it this could be it come on this could be it I don't know, there's so much fucking hype, I don't know, holy shit. Yes! Yes! I'm a fucking hero! Absolute fucking hero! Yes! Ugh. Oh.